Hello students, it's time for literature and this is literature for SS3 students. We shall today start first with the prospects of literature. And that means, what do you expect from literature? What does the study of literature do for you? How do you benefit from studying literature? And that will be captured under three bulleted points. They are the knowledge of literature helps one to better understand one's immediate environment. Again, the knowledge of literature helps one to understand the culture of others. Some of the places you may not have been before physically, you may get to get to these places when you read literary works coming from those regions. Again, literature also is a means of entertainment. It educates and it entertains too. These are some of the prospects of literature. Again, a graduate of any course related to literature can also work in a publishing firm. The person can equally work in any government parastata. These are many more are prospects of literature. Let us now go ahead to talk about definition of literature. Of course, there is no clear court definition for literature. There has been a lot of definitions from a number of persons, depending on what the perceived literature to be. But literature generally may be seen as an imaginative work of art. Some have equally argued that literature is an imitation of life. To such definition, there has been a number of criticism, because some have argued that some of the literary work are not indeed a representation of what happens in the society. Hence, literature may not be seen as a reflection of the society. But be that as it is, literature has to do with an imaginative work. Literature is distinct from any other work, any other written work, because it has to do with the imaginative production of, of the writer, be it an author, a novelist, a poet, or a dramatist. Now, literature is divided into three main genres, and by that we mean that literature is divided into three main parts. The first is drama, followed by prose, and followed by poetry. Some have argued that it is properly arranged in this manner, poetry, drama, and then prose. But whichever way you decide to arrange them, we know that we have three genres, drama, prose, and poetry. Drama is distinct from all other literary genres because it is written in acts and scenes. And the main feature of the drama is dialogue and, of course, action. These are the main features. Dialogue, essentially action, because, of course, in other work of another genres, you could still see dialogue. Uh, but in drama, fiction, I mean, I mean action, rather, it's, it's the main feature. The next is prose. Prose is distinct from drama and of course poetry because it is written in chapters. And did I forget to tell you that the main character in drama is often referred to as a hero, while the opposing character in a dramatic work of art is referred to as a villain. Unlike what we have in the prose, where the main character is referred to as the protagonist, while the character who is opposed to the protagonist is referred to to as the antagonists. Poetry is different from the other two literary genres I've mentioned because it is written in, in lines and of course stanzas. And that is it for the genres of literature. Of course, don't forget that we have two types of literature, or two forms of literature rather, two forms that the written form and the oral form. The written form of literature and the oral form of literature. Now, it is under the written form of literature that we are not talking about types or genres of literature under which we have three genres, the drama, the prose, and the poetry. I'm sure you understand those divisions. They are very, very important. Now, our focus in this class this morning would be on drama. Now, we are not going to pick all the drama you have in Nigeria or in Africa. We shall focus our attention on just one dramatic work. And that is the one written by Frank Ogodo. It is titled Harvest of Corruption. So this morning our focus is going to be on Frank Ogodo's Harvest of Corruption. 
We shall start by looking into the background slash setting of this work. I did say in our previous class that the background of any work of art it is a sign of canon to understanding that work of art. It is very important to understand the background of a work of art because no writer write, writes in a vacuum, no writer writes in, in, in a space. Any writer occupies a particular position. And the position the writer occupies is his or her background. And whatever it is the writer does, it's monitored, directed, predicted by where the writer is coming from. Now for Frank Ogudo's Harvest of Corruption, this work has a background in Africa, a continent where corruption is the order of the day. In fact, we can even streamline it to Nigeria. This work is taken from the Nigerian society where public office officers are very corrupt. They divert funds that is meant for the social and economic welfare of the citizens into their private pockets. And they do so with great impunity, enlisting the help of even those who are supposed to be custodians of the law, that's the police, the, the lawyers, the judges in the court, and, and of course, all other members of the society. And it is against this background that the author of this work has written Harvest of Corruption. The work, of course, generally speaking, is set in Nigeria, but of course, in that text, the main setting is uh, an imaginary country called Jakasa. The imaginary country in that work is Jakasa. And of course, the capital of that imaginary country is Jabu. My guess is that Jabu is a corruption of Abuja, which is, of course, the federal capital charity of Nigeria. But whatever that is, that's my opinion. But do know that. The imaginary country of Frank Ogodo's harvest of corruption is Jakasa country, and while the capital of this country is Jabu. And now that is it for the background of uh, Frank Ogodo's harvest of corruption. Don't forget that the title of the work is Harvest of Corruption. Now let's go into the plot account. I am very sure that you know that the plot of any work of art is the arrangement of the events in that work with emphasis placed on causation. Did you get that? So when you begin to arrange events in a work of art in the order in which they are supposed to happen, what you are delivering is the plot account of such work. And now we want to focus on the plot account of Frank Ogodo's Harvest of Corruption. The work is centered on the corrupt acts of public servants in the country called Jakasa. And now it revolves around a very important character who is called Chief Halada Ade Amaka. Chief Halada Ade Amaka is the minister in charge of external relation in the country called Jakasa. This man is described as a man that has a very big tummy and a round face, always sweating, walking like a man whose scrotum is enlarged. And now you get the picture of corruption. Very corrupt man. You know what he does? Now, this man has um, a lady he employs. And the lady is Ochwele. Ochwele is the name of this lady. Who is working as a personal secretary to, to, to him. And Ochoa's job is to recruit ladies for this Minister for External Affairs, or External Relations, I mean Chief Ade Holada Amaka. And Ochoa enlists the help of ladies for him. And you know what these ladies do? Chief uses this lady to go about his cocaine business. And that's what he does with these ladies. And of course, he equally enlists the help. Of law enforcement agents, one of them is the commissioner of police in the country called Jakasa. The other is Justice Orderly. Justice Orderly is a justice in the court of law. 